Hello, and welcome to Travel Stories Unpacked. If you love hearing stories about travel and random opinions about it, then you have come to the right place. So much so, in fact, that if you've been with us uh, already for our first few episodes, you may have noticed that we added the word stories right into our title just because we really wanted to make sure that people knew what it was all about and that you were going to be in for a ton of fun stories when you join us. And I am your host, Ashley Newton, and with me today is Melissa Rice, who is a travel aficionado, a travel lover, and I would say a pretty healthy gal. Well, I do try. I make no claims to any, like, perfection in that regard, but nobody likes to be yeah. sick and everybody wants to feel good. And Exactly. So, yeah. And you might be wondering, that's weird, Ashley, why did you mention that Melissa is healthy? Well, that's because... <laughs> Were you looking at my medical chart before we started? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but we thought that that would be a fun topic for the show today, is to talk about staying healthy while you're traveling. And as soon as we knew that we wanted to talk about this, our minds were sort of racing about all the different things that that means even to us and what we mm -hmm. do about it. So, Melissa, where did your mind first go when I was like, let's talk about being healthy during our vacation time? Yeah. And my first thought went to the, like, avoiding germs or not being sick, avoiding getting sick while you're traveling. Like, that to me is, like, staying healthy. But then it was interesting as we were talking that you kind of took it a different direction. Yeah, I didn't think about that yeah. at all. And then no, that's not what I thought at all for this topic. <laughs> but I do think we should start there because I think that that makes sense. You know, it's sort of the first thing you think about when you leave the house or maybe not. Maybe you don't think about it at all mm -hmm. and maybe you just have like a really strong immune system or well, something. Like Everyone's situation is different too. Like yeah. what my concerns are or not what your concerns are. So My true. family and we all have a different comfort level when it comes to risk and different like underlying conditions. So I think it's important to say that like what works for me is different for you, is different for whoever. Yes. And there's no judgment one way or the other if you choose to do something. Never here. Not do something. Never on this you, podcast. We don't judge you. Well, I mean, we'll judge lots of <laughs> other things, just not that. A little bit. Yeah, a little so. bit. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I will be 100% honest. This isn't really something that I gave much attention to. Like, especially traveling when I was younger or, you know, family vacations. I think sort of that youth making you feel like you're just invincible. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now I'm, I'm in my 30s and everything is different <laughs> now. And I have become the person that not only do I travel with Purell, I still travel with a mask. I may or may not use it. I don't know. I just go with the flow. But I also travel with like Clorox wipes or like those little like wet wipes and I sanitize sort of my spaces now. I am that person too and my kids and my husband have are trained like they sit down on the airplane seat and they do not touch anything yeah until I give them the wipe and we do just any high touch surface so tray table handles yes. armrest seatbelt buckle air vent absolutely wipe it down and some of that for me came in one of my jobs working in the airline industry I supervised airline cleaners or I was there when like a quick turn so like the plane lands and it has to people get off it has to get sort of clean and so then what, it, people what get back on. What does that process look like? Like what so, are they really like <laughs> let's get into the industry okay. secrets. I want to so know what happens. A, a turn clean like that is very different than like the airplane's done flying for the day at night and that's more that like a deep clean yeah. right and I have to say all of my experiences before any of the COVID-19 pandemic, and I'm sure things have somewhat changed since then. Mm. But really... Disclaimer no. Yeah, right? that like, so, but in my experience, the shorter amount of time that the plane is on the ground, the less is cleaned. Yeah. So it goes from maybe like a quick wipe of the bathrooms, the restrooms, the laboratories, technically. On but your actual seat, your But your area. seat, like fold the seat belts, make sure that there's no trash that you can see <laughs> there yeah. may still be stuff even in like the seat back pocket yeah, in front those of little you pouches. little pouches little. of mystery goodness yeah. <laughs> you know um so it's really more of like what i would call like a straightening up of the airplane gotcha versus we're just tidying up tidying for up exactly our next kind of like if you're at home and somebody is coming over unexpectedly and you're like well i'm just gonna shove a bunch of stuff in the closet make hide it look the pretty clutter, hide the but you trash. really didn't you know like dust and vacuum and yeah yeah so. so is that when you started being like you know i'm just gonna take care of this myself yes. and okay yeah. so you've been doing this a long time i've been yeah well thanks i mean it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's always well, comes I mean, back to how old i, I am no <laughs> no see, but yeah that was one of the things and, and yeah those jobs were for me like 
more like about 20 years ago yeah so so but i mean like not necessarily related to it is it was far before like the the panda the thing the thing we're not gonna talk about <laughs> anymore so yeah and then you know having kids adds a different level to that too because yeah. what i do as an adult is different than what a child does while they're sitting on an airplane seat and so just knowing that things are going to be touched and they're going to touch their face and put their Absolutely. hands in their mouth so that yeah. adds like another but still not wanting to be that person who's like wearing a hazmat suit and you know refusing like there's a balance and so I, how do you I, not yeah. look like a crazy person and i'm with you on the mask thing yeah the last time i flew which it's been a little while like maybe a year i wore a mask yeah regard it was it's flu season it's, i don't oh. want anything i don't want to yeah. feel gross when i get to my destination i don't want to be sick when i get home and i'm trying to get back in the swing of like real life so you're just exposing yourself to a lot of different people with a lot of different things plus i hate the idea maybe i'm coming down with something i don't know it i don't want to get the person next to me sick either yes absolutely so. i'll still mask in those situations where it's like close to and from the office or whatever if i'm a little sniffly like but anyway, moving yeah. aside from that topic, <laughs> I do feel much better now that I have gotten into this new routine. And like, I just feel like I relax more when I'm on the plane or, you know what I mean? Like I or on a transfer bus or something like I just like I can take a little bit more of a deep breath, sort of settle in. And Inside I just, mask, no, just yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, like you just feel like, OK, I. It, yeah. it, even if sometimes things are just a placebo effect and there's nothing. Totally. Yeah. I still take like I increase vitamin C. Before we travel, the emergency you know, or like powdered vitamin C. I always mean to do that, when and then I never actually follow through. It could be completely anecdotal. It could be placebo effect. But we started doing that like the day before we travel, the day we travel, sometimes the day after, like just those. And I feel like we came down with fewer like sniffly kind of things. Yeah. Bugs after we had traveled. So in I my mean, mind, like I'm no doctor. What does it hurt to? Tra- yeah. But it makes not a sense, doctor right? only play one on this podcast. <laughs> Um, no, like, but no, like, I just think your immune system is a little off balance. You're not sleeping the same. You're eating different foods. You're up weird hours to get to the airport. Mm-hmm. If there's something that can kind of help keep your defenses up. Yeah. So aside from the like emergency or, you know, vitamin prep mm-hmm. and the general sanitizing and sort of trying to have a little germ barrier, is there anything else that you do sort of regularly in that arena of just trying to sort of prevent, a, you know, like something you don't want to experience on your vacation, getting, getting um, sick? Another thing is like being careful with food as much as you want to try new things mm-hmm. while you're traveling and you're in a new place with different flavors. There are, you know, some, <clears throat> some risks with foods that you don't know how they're prepared, or maybe it's just ingredients that your system's not used to Ah, so and having traveled like through central america south america a little bit you know i want to try some of the things that we don't have here in the united states oh absolutely but like one time we were going to be getting on a boat to go down like down the river into the jungle for a few days Yes. and in that area they eat something i just forgot it's chonta cura chonta something like that don't quote me it's basically like little grubby worm things that they grill. Ooh, they're eat grilled. It. They they you can't eat them raw. I don't think I could do that. But they will grill them. But the only chance I was given to like try them was the night before we were going to get on the boat and basically be camping in the jungle yeah. for four days. And I thought, if this makes me sick, no, that's so. There so may did my, you try it or did I you not try it? Because did anybody I was, with you try no. it? No. Okay. It was my husband and I, maybe another couple. I don't remember. And it was like, you know, I'd like to try it. But four days in the jungle with what may or may not even be facilities. Like, I don't, yeah. it's like, mm, I don't think I, on I don't, a boat with a bunch of other people. No. I don't think that would have crossed my mind. Yeah. I think it would have been like, yes. But and if, if I, I like it, I'll try three more. Yeah. Like, you know? So, no, but I'm like, mm, no, I'm good. Yeah. And I, I had friends that would visit and one set of friends, um, they wanted to try something and they tried like the street food version of it. And their flight home was not pleasant. No, they, really? Yeah, they got sick and you know so why do that the day before you're get, the night before you're getting on a plane and you need yeah, to be traveling all day totally. so just those kinds of things too so just well and are you yeah. naturally the sort of person that like does transportation well because like I am usually very lucky I don't get motion sickness oh yeah I don't really have that but there was one time in Cozumel 
you know, uh, like taking the ferry. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, it was so (laughs) rough and I got so sick, like not sick. Not, yeah, not like but just that feeling. Uh, oh, it was yeah. Just and it terrible. was like we got there and I was like, I'm so like, because I was so lightheaded and I was so just like, you know, like wobbly, the whole mm-hmm. thing. So immediately I, I tried to toughen up and then I was like, I just got to like sit down. I got to go find somewhere to sit. So we went to a pizza hut and I got the breadsticks because I knew oh, that like I just kind of like yeah, some carb yeah, kind of something. So, like, something it's something I know the taste. I'm I know like, the texture. Tell me you didn't do like Supreme Meat Lover. <laughs> So just my yeah. sad little and it was downpouring so the whole streets were sort of like a river so I'm just like my feet are in the river and I'm just trying to eat my breadsticks and not get sick but otherwise I'm pretty good are you do you suffer I from that sort of I do suffer ailment? from motion sickness I have oh, to be no. careful so especially like a bus ride airplane not as much unless it's super turbulent gotcha. like a car ride bus ride and then my younger I have two sons and my younger one it was blessed with you know, the same gene, apparently. His defense is usually to just try to go to sleep as soon as possible in a moving vehicle and wake up when we get there. Not always If you can do that, yeah. Um, I will take, usually, motion sickness, like, preventative stuff before I get on a boat. Have you tried the glasses? I have not tried the glasses. Have you seen them? Do you know what I'm talking about? Can we describe them real quick? (laughs) Because, okay, my friend has these motion sickness glasses, and they look like something out of a cartoon. Like, they look like... Like, do you remember in, like, the early 2000s, 90s, like, they would have those water toys that had, like, the, like, pirate ship or the little, like, mm. uh, like dolphin floating in it. Little, like, colored water. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what these glasses look like. And they have rings on the front, and they have rings on the side, mm. and they look so silly, which is how I know that they worked for him. Because nobody would be willing to ever be seen in these things if they were not effective. That's a good point. Because no one's going to voluntarily. And the idea is that it creates like an artificial horizon. Because that's what yeah, that's, that's so... what will mess with your inner ear and cause you to feel like that feeling is what your eye is seeing is not what your ear is feeling. And there's that. Yeah. So, I, but I have not tried those. Does I, the medicine work the, for The you? medicine works for me. I have okay. to find something that's like non-drowsy. Otherwise you So is, is this just like but, Dramamine or is Yeah, there... there's some different brands gotcha. that um, I can't remember because I take like the generic one. Always. But yeah. Always all, all with about the generic. The <laughs> and also there are wristbands that have pressure points. Those confuse me so much. Yeah. I feel like that is like witchcraft. I feel like that is like, <laughs> like, I just feel like it's placebo. Like, how does that work? And but I believe it, point, but it's so hard for my if brain it does to get help, it. help, so yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. I, but I do think, I mean, we were in the mountains of Ecuador one particular ride that was just and at one point like yeah. both of my kids were ill at the same time like oh. I'm holding bag for each of them no yeah like it was it was felt like the longest bus ride ever <laughs> so that's not so much fun the other but I've learned tricks over the years like don't let my stomach get too empty yeah because that will make it worse right like and you so, said we're all so different so you have to get to yeah. know your body sipping on coke like actual coca-cola helps settle now, my stomach i this Some is people say a side to, yeah, debate yeah. but people say coke is different when you're out of the oh US. absolutely so 1, does it still is. work no matter what kind of coke or is it like better if it's like you know, you know i don't think bottle, i've really d- i don't think i've really done the coke here in the states to know because gotcha. it was always like my go-to in when you're mexico south america and where they're using generally it's like actual sugar it's the yeah it's it do, and to me, it does totally taste different. I can I taste the difference. I think so, too. I think it tastes so, better. <laughs> but it's just one of those things, whatever reason, it's comforting to my stomach, and if that's what I need... It, yeah, the carbonation. The carbonation. I feel Some like people that's say it should be carbonated, trick. but anyway. Oh. You gotta find what works for you. 100. But it's the it's when you didn't figure out what worked for you, and now you're miserable. That's what we're trying to avoid. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. yeah, so the idea of protecting yourself from germs and sickness is one area of staying healthy, mm-hmm. but I feel like we haven't even got to scratch the surface yet about all of the other stuff. So how do you feel yeah. about we just keep talking and we'll do like a part two? I think so. I think there's so much more we could talk about, but let's, okay. let's make a... Let's do it. Not, not torment our listeners. And, yeah. Like, give them a we chance. We have to take care of yeah. our health too, you yeah. guys. Yeah, I need why you <laughs> hydrate and rest. No, no but we, there really yeah. is so much more to it, so I think it just lends itself to a whole... I no, think another, so. Another episode. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to, so please come back for part two where we're going to talk about sort of all the other aspects of staying healthy while traveling, maybe like diet, exercise, routines, yeah. Yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for watching. Melissa, don't go anywhere. I won't. And 
Come back for the rest of the episode and more travel stories unpacked. And don't forget that this podcast is brought to you by KHM Travel Group. So head over to khmtravel.com to learn more about a leading host agency for independent travel agents.